Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast, back from our break. So, uh, what is this number? Is it 12? I think this is episode number 12 of the Reselling Rebels podcast and this one is going to be all about Q4. So, as normal, I've got about a page worth of notes It's actually coming up to lunchtime as I've started recording this. So what I may do with this podcast is have a little bit of an intermission uh, halfway through, then have some lunch, then come back and uh, restart the podcast. So I might put a little bit of that uh, elevator type music in uh, halfway through a video, just for about 30 seconds or a minute, because it's funny for the comedic effect. Um, And then we will continue with the podcast. So with that being said, got plenty to talk about. So why not, let's just get into this um, and, uh, yeah, get chatting about Q4. So obviously by the time this goes up, I think it'll be, what, the 16th, Monday the 16th. I might put it up on Monday, I might put it up on another day. Uh, It depends on what other videos I've got scheduled and stuff. But it might be the 16th or it might be another day, maybe the 17th or something like that. But it will be in the next few days anyway when it's getting uploaded. So it will be very fast approaching, it will be getting near to Q4, obviously officially Q4 starts in October, obviously the 1st of October, but a lot of people these days kind of say that October can't really be included in Q4 because it's not really brilliant, a lot of people kind of just class it as November and December really, the the bulk of Q4, but as we will talk about in a little bit, Q4 isn't actually Q4, and I will touch upon that in a little bit, but I know that David, uh, David McGregor, if I don't touch upon that, he'll moan at me, and he'll start saying, no, it's not called Q4, and all the rest of it, so I'm going to touch on that, so if you don't know what I mean by that, you will know what I mean by that in a little bit. So first off, I wanted to explain a little bit about how Q4 shouldn't be glorified, So, for certain niches, things might not pick up in quarter four. Obviously, I'm somewhat gearing this at new resellers. I'm somewhat gearing this podcast at slightly uh, less experienced resellers. Maybe been doing this six months, a year, three months, maybe a year and a half, something like that. Um, But, you know, that kind of range... People who've maybe only had one Q4 or have maybe not even had a Q4 yet. Myself, this will be my fifth Q4 uh, in you know October to December this year. It'll be my fifth uh, attempt at Q4, my fifth go around with it. So obviously I've picked up a little bit of knowledge over the few times I've been doing it. Um, and yeah, essentially a few things, a few different niches, depending on the niche that you're selling in, things may not pick up. It may be the case that you're thinking, maybe you've not had a Q4 yet, and you've been told by everyone about how cool Q4 is and how things really take off. And obviously, if you're doing Amazon or something like that, things will take off massively and all all the rest of it. And everyone says all this stuff. Everyone says, yeah, it's going to be brilliant, all the rest of it. But there are certain niches, and even if you're selling on certain platforms, where things might not pick up that much generally, the general consensus, whatever platform you're selling on, if it's Amazon, Etsy, eBay, any, you know, like Poshmark or whatever in the US, I don't know, I'm just making, you know, I'm just saying platforms really, but generally, the general consensus is that all of them will pick up somewhat. But if you're selling, let's say, antiques or collectibles, obviously that's something I'm fairly familiar with, um, it probably won't pick up that much. It might pick up a little bit, it might there might be a small little kind of uptick in sales and again it really depends on what sort of items you're selling within that niche because there's loads of different sub niches to antiques and collectibles so certain sub niches will pick up and stuff but it might not pick up that much compared with let's say toys and games or with video games or with uh i don't know what else maybe clothing picks up a little bit but i would say clothing obviously i don't have much experience with clothing so i can't really comment too much but i would say clothing maybe picks up a little bit depending on what you're selling maybe if you're selling more winter themed clothing it would pick up but generally i don't think it picks up massively But depending on what you're selling, it's going to either pick up quite a lot or it's only going to pick up a little bit or it might not pick up at all. So if you are new to reselling, if you've not had a Q4, I just want to kind of 
bring your expectations down a little bit. Not, I don't want to bring you all your hopes down. I don't want to crush your dreams with Q4 or anything. But I just want to bring those expectations down to a little bit of a healthier level. And just let you know that depending on what you're selling, that, and depending on the quality of what you're selling, the quality of your own listings, the titles, the descriptions, the photos, well, more the titles than photos, not necessarily descriptions, not many people look in the description these days, but definitely good photos, good titles, uh, you know, and obviously selling in certain niches, then they're going to pick up those items, you know, toys and games and stuff like video games, they may pick up but just other items might just not pick up for you. They might just not see any sort of improvement. Even if you have got good, to be honest, even if you have got good photos or titles or anything, it might be that you're just selling in a niche that doesn't pick up that much. And uh, it means that obviously you might be, if you've got quite high expectations going into your first Q4, you might be deflated a little bit. But just keep your expectations fairly low get down but get your head down get doing good quality listings get doing good quality work keep plugging away now as we enter q4 and obviously even before q4 would have been good to be doing a little bit of preparation and and getting some listings up and stuff and then just see how it goes don't fix an ideal to it don't say to yourself right i want to do x x number in turnover or in set or in sales or profit or whatever don't think to yourself, right, I'm going to do that amount or I want to sell X number of items in your first Q4. I would say even anyone shouldn't really do that, like, you know, a fixed number of sales, a fixed number of units. But to be honest, if you've been doing it a while and you know your market and you know the flow of your business, then it starts to lend itself to for you to be able to set a sales target or to be able to set a number of units sold, a target of number of units sold. So as you get a bit more experienced, uh, and obviously, especially if you're doing maybe RA or wholesale or something, it might lend itself more to you being able to set a little bit of an expectation there or a little bit of a sales target. But if you're new to it, just take it as it comes. Enjoy your first Q4. If things don't pick up, then maybe have a look at your listings. Maybe it is to do with your photos or your titles or something on your listings. Or maybe it is just naturally occurring that it's obviously not picking up for you because you're in a certain niche that just, just generally doesn't pick up that much in quarter four. But don't get too disheartened with it. Treat it as a learning experience if it is your first or your second Q4. And uh, and just go with, really also just go with one product or with what, well not one product, but go with one niche. Focus on one thing. Don't think about doing all different things. You know, people tend to get into in the first year, they start eBay and then they want to move on to Amazon straight away. Or they start Amazon and they want to move on to eBay to try and get more traction, try and get more variety in their business, try and get more, uh, you know, obviously more sales and more profit and all the rest of it, which is fair enough. But I would say your first Q4, your second Q4, just focus on doing one platform really well, focus on even maybe doing one niche really well, you know, get heavily into those toys and games or get heavily into video games or heavily into clothing or whatever, and just focus on really building up a good niche in that respect and then at a later date, slowly move forward into different ventures, into different niches, into different platforms. Um, also, I wanted to point out, make sure that your business is doing well all year. Don't pin all your hopes on Q4. So again, comes back to a little bit of that expectation that I was just saying. But yeah, just make sure that your business, if you're new to this, you know, again, if you're in that sort of six month, 12 month, 18 month period, make sure that your business is doing well all of the year. And if it isn't doing well all of the year or you're seeing little drops in it, for example, I've seen a little bit of a drop over summer, you've got to first categorize that you've got to first focus on that and think right well I've got to make a little bit of a plan I've got to change something up here so that then I know that in the coming months aside from Q4 I know that I can 
correct those things, those mistakes, those issues that I've been having, and then obviously I can continue, and then I can focus on really uh, attacking Q4 once more, but there's no point thinking about pinning all your hopes on Q4 or really attacking Q4 if the rest of your year your business is absolutely terrible. Now, of course, there are certain circumstances and certain business models that actually account for a terrible January through to September, but then all of Q4, they do pretty much 90% of their business in Q4, and that's their kind of business model. Now, that's not necessarily terrible within that business model because, of course, that is just how it is for that business, um, and they have accounted for that. Uh, you know, a lot of re I think a lot of retail stores end up uh, like making 90% of their revenue within the first, uh, first, uh, not the first, but the last few weeks or something of the year, or certain days like Cyber Monday and Black Friday, like November time, December time, they end up making the bulk of the revenue, and they obviously account for that. That's part of their flow of their their kind of cash flow, their business flow, their accounting, all that sort of stuff. They they know that, and therefore it's not so bad. Again, drawing this close to home with reselling, certain RA or, or people who do RA or OA, retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, which is buying things from supermarkets on sale and flipping them on Amazon generally, but sometimes on eBay. And then online arbitrage, obviously buying things online, um, a discount generally, and then flipping them back online on eBay or Amazon, generally again, Amazon then those sort of people may end up knowing that most of the year is going to be poor for them, but through November and December specifically maybe, they do really, really well and they're happy with that. Now that is somewhat pinning all of your hopes on quarter four, but because of that business model that, that they've structured it around, they kind of have to do that. And what generally happens with those people is they are very, um, they're very up on trends. They're very um, quick on the draw with things, and therefore they can manage it. It works okay for them. And also, they may still do a fair bit of money throughout the rest of the year, but it's just not as much as they would do in quarter four. So, of course, you've got all these different things to consider as well, and it depends on your business and your niche and what your mo model is to be able to really um, know what you want from Q4 and also uh, what you need and a level of expectation there and, and, and whether it's going to be uh, right for you, whether you can actually expect that and know that you will hit certain targets and therefore it's going to be okay to sacrifice a little bit of sales or profit earlier on in the year, let's say. So I've also wrote down here again, I've kind of just flowed into this a little bit, but I'll read this out anyway. So what do you need or expect out of Q4? What is your business model? If you are RA or OA seller, you may expect or need Q4 to be great. If you are an antique seller, you may not need to change anything over Q4. I don't really think I need to talk anymore about that because actually I've just realized I've kind of just bled into the second point there anyway and kind of just put the two points together. So yeah, I mean, just essentially making sure that you you have a level of understanding and what you want from Q4, you have a, a small level of expectation, but not too much of a level. And as I say, if you're newer, maybe you don't have as high a level of expectation with Q4 than maybe if you're more experienced. For me, I have a little bit more of an expectation over Q4 because I know I've stockpiled stock all year. I know what I did last year. I know what I did the year before. I know what I did the year before that, etc. And therefore, I, I, I know that I want to be in a certain realm of turnover and a certain realm of profit between specifically November and December. Not so much October. I don't really put too much expectation on October. But November and December, I do, uh, you know, I have somewhat of a, of a boundary or an, a, an expectation boundary. But someone who's new to this, I wouldn't say don't have too much expectation. Again, if you're doing RA or OA, you may have a little bit of that expectation or that need there. And also you want to draw into how much you actually need to make a living into this as well. And again, we don't want to um, expect to put all our weight or expectation on Q4 to make us our, the bulk of our living. That's not something that we'd want to do, especially if we're new to reselling. But we can at least think, right, I'm going to get X number of stock and maybe, gonna, maybe I'm going to choose to stockpile some stock 
I'm going to get X number of stock. I'm going to, I know I can achieve the best prices in Q4, so that's why I'm stockpiling it rather than selling it just right away. And then what I'm going to do is essentially I'm just going to um, sell it in Q4 and, uh, and you know, I make X amount of money and I know what I would need really in terms of revenue, in terms of profit. But that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to kind of uh, meet my kind of need, what I actually need out of Q4, um, whether it be for earning a living, whether it be for paying certain things or what, whatever it may be. So there's also, you've got to think about that. You've got to think about your baseline, what you actually need, uh, not only just to make a living, but maybe even uh, things like you might want a holiday. And although it's not a need, um, you know, it might be almost, it, it, it's al it almost feels like a need for you to earn a little bit more in Q4, to be able to pile a little bit of money aside so that then in the next six months of the following year, you can go on that holiday and therefore that's something that might come into it. But again, that leans more towards expectation rather than direct need, as I mentioned, more of a want. But still, it's something to consider and if if that want is present, then you need to act upon that well prior to quarter four to be able to know that you'll be able to get more money to be able to put that extra money aside to then go on that cruise or that holiday in the Caribbean or wherever it may be. Um, but yeah, so that's that one. So next, Q4 is not Q. Uh, it's not called Q4. It's actually Q3. So David McGregor is very, very vocal of this fact. He, I don't know why. I don't know whether he does genuinely get worked up about it or whether he's just like doing it just for a laugh or something. But he seems to always what, like preach the fact that it's not Q4. It's not Q4. And he is right. Uh, technically speaking, he is right. Um, Q, because the quarters of the year are meant to go in the financial year. So April to April. So... I think I think this is what he says anyway. It might it might I might be getting this slightly wrong actually, but basically Q3 is October to December and then Q4 I'm assuming would be January to Mar end of March or possibly the 5th of April when the financial year ends. So in actual retail, in retail business, so you know bricks and mortar business and all the rest of it and also even retail online Q3 is the period between October and December, not Q4. But for whatever reason, resellers specifically, and I don't know why this has happened, but I mean, I've always said it as well. I've always said Q4. But we always specify Q4 as uh, October to December, and that isn't actually incorrect. It's Q3. But obviously, it must have been where this has come from, actually, is the fact that it's the fourth quarter of the year. It's not the fourth quarter of the financial year or the school year or anything like that, but it is the fourth quarter of the actual, uh, you know, what is it? Is it Julian calendar? No, is it Gregorian calendar? I don't know what the calendar is, but it's, a, it's the fourth quarter of the calendar year anyway, whichever calendar that turns out to be we're, we're under. I think it might be the Gregorian calendar on now, isn't it? Not the Julian. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, I think there's an interesting point around that. There's some... I swear that I heard somewhere that August is named after, was it one of the Roman emperor, emperors like Augustus or something, and that's where we get August from. I don't know, a little bit of a fun fact there for you. It might not be correct, but anyway, you can Google it and see if it's correct. But anyway, so it isn't, Q4 isn't called Qu Quarter 4, so this video should actually be titled All About Q3, but for some reason it doesn't do, it just doesn't have the right ring to it, does it? Quarter 4 sa sa sounds better. So I'm going to continue to call it quarter four, despite it actually being quarter three, because it just sounds better. And I don't care who bloody moans at me for it, because that's what I'm going to do. And I, I like calling it Q4. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, but in all honesty, we have to uh, obviously give um, precedent to the fact that it actually is Q3. You know, we have to draw attention to the fact that it is Q3 not Q4. But anyway, so that's that. That's a little fun fact for you. I'm going to do one or two more points and then we will go uh, for this little intermission. 
So make sure um, if you are selling items that will pick up at Christmas that you pre-order a good amount of packaging supplies to support the increase in sales. And a very, very quick little plug, you can get a load of the packaging supplies that I use in my business down below in the description if you would like to. Uh, you don't have to, but the links are down there, of course, and they, of course, are affiliate links. But you can go down there and obviously do that if you would like to. But yeah, pre-order uh, all your packaging supplies. Make sure you've got maybe double the amount of supplies you've got you normally have, or maybe just one and a half times the amount of supplies you normally have. Again, it really depends because certain niches won't actually pick up that much, but it's always better to prepare in advance even if things don't pick up that much, rather than not to prepare. And then, obviously, you have to scrounge around for packaging when you've got 20 orders to go out or 30 orders to go out one day. So, you know, just order your packaging now. Make sure you pre-ordered it. You know, some people may not have the uh, storage facilities to be able to store double the amount of packaging that they'd normally buy. I mean, for, for to be honest, for me, I couldn't... I buy my bubble wrap, and there's a video on my channel. It's the... Uh, but I, it, I did it recently, actually. It's the bubble wrap review of the three big rolls of sealed air big bubble wrap. I buy them in huge rolls, and I buy three huge rolls, and it is about six foot, seven foot tall or something, this bubble oh, it's about No, it's about... Is it as tall as me? Maybe, maybe it's about 5.5 foot high or something. It's it's a big thing anyway. It's massive. Um, and, you know, I don't... I could possibly store two of them, but it would be hard. It would get in the way, you know, to store them as well as other packaging and all the rest of it. But, you know, things like jiffy bags or things like poly mailers and stuff like that, generally you can... You should be able to store, you know, an extra 100 of those or an extra 50 of those if you want to just make sure that you've got enough kind of thing for quarter four. So yeah, just make sure you're pre pre-ordering stuff now uh, for as we get, you know, closer. And uh, obviously things, and this isn't something I've wrote down as well actually, but this is something important to mention. So I'll go off my notes for a second here and just mention this. But there's actually, the way that Q4 works in my experience, you know, some people will say that there's like a massive spike with Q4. In my experience, that's not the case. It kind of gradually builds up. So, you know, for October, it might be okay, but it might not be brilliant. Then you get into November and it goes up. It's like an exponential curve kind of thing. You know, November, it starts to go up a bit more and you're maybe halfway through this exponential curve on this graph. And then by sort of end of November to probably mid-December, possibly even slightly that later December, maybe, you know, coming up to maybe the 20th, something like that, you then get to the peak of the exponential curve. Um, and that's how I've always kind of experienced Q4. That's kind of how it's happened pretty much every year um, with it, as I say, peaking out in that mid to slightly latter part of December, not really late December, but, you know, like 20th, 21st, something like that. Um, so I wanted just to include that. And of course, if it is going to go up in that kind of exponential curve, you'll want to be getting your packaging supplies in now to obviously as it starts to uh, curve upwards, as it starts to get a little bit more busier, then you can you can obviously have those supplies there. And you may need to also want or you may want to do another order in November as well, just to keep on top of it and make sure that you're okay with it. Um, but as I say, again, with this exponential curve idea, it gives the idea that, um, that basically it's going to be really, really busy because obviously an exponential curve, as you're going upwards towards the peak of it, it kind of, if you look at an exponential curve on a graph, it looks pretty intense. And it will be like that if you sell the right items. If you sell toys and games on Amazon, and let's say most of them are brand new and sealed, and you've got a good quantity of them, most likely it will be like that exponential curve and it will really take off for you. But then as I say, there are, we need to humble ourselves a little bit. We need to lower our expectations if it is uh, that you're doing your first Q4 or whatever. And if you are selling something different, it may be that that exponential curve isn't as intense for you. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, and then also, just a very quick point here, and then as I say, we will have a... Um, 
a break. So I've literally wrote down what I've literally wrote down again what I've just said. But uh, if you are selling on Amazon, typically you may find Q4 is a bigger experience, more volume of sales, etc. Especially selling toys. So I've literally just already covered that point. Um, but yeah, Amazon will probably be. B generally generally will be better than ebay for q4 so there might be certain things on ebay that do take off and maybe do better than on amazon but generally speaking if you're doing toys and games and you're maybe comparing them to ebay to amazon in q4 amazon will be the place where you're going to get more volume and you'll probably get better prices well you're pretty much definitely guaranteed to get better prices for most of the items that you're selling if it's toys and games with the odd except you know that may do better on ebay and may uh, sell in better volume on ebay there's always the odd exception to the rule but yeah generally um in q4 if you're selling on amazon you're probably going to have a bigger experience a bigger kind of exponential curve than if you are selling on ebay especially when it comes to relating to toys and games so we will have the intermission now. I will leave you with a little bit of cool music and uh, I will be back very soon. So I will see you very soon. Right then, we are back after what was a beautiful lunch. So with that being said, let's continue with this podcast. Uh, and the next point I've got wrote down here is be prepared after quarter four for any returns or problems you may get. Selling in volume usually increases these issues. So if you've, let's say, sold a higher quantity in December, than you normally would on another month, let's say in July or August, then the chances are in January, and especially with probably doing a fair high volume in November as well, fact is in January, you'll probably end up getting a few returns. You may get other problems. There's also an issue that I've not actually wrote down here, but if you're, let's say, selling on eBay and you're sending a lot of stuff out, because you're sending a higher volume of stuff out and because we're all human, there is an increased chance that you may send out the wrong items to, some, to someone if your processes, processes aren't honed down. Um, there may be other issues that spring up. So you've got to also just be on it throughout Q4, making sure that your processes with regards to labeling and packaging and everything are honed down are solid, are secure, so then you don't make any mistakes that will then lead to other issues, maybe slightly after Q4. Because if people are coming across issues, for example, if you send a wrong item out on the 16th of December or something like that, people are probably going to end up just saying, oh, well, we'll deal with it after Christmas. So then, obviously, you get more problems after Christmas that way. Especially if it's maybe the 20th of December or 21st and you send a wrong item out, we may say, we may deal with it after Christmas. Other, other than that, they may actually uh, be quite angry and message you just before Christmas if it is something that they needed in time for Christmas, if it was a Christmas present. Sometimes, however, people don't buy Christmas presents. Sometimes it's just that they're buying it around Christmas because maybe they've got a bit of extra money to spend or something like that. And therefore, in those circumstances, they'll probably deal with it after Christmas. But yeah, just make sure none of that's going on. Make sure you're being... Uh, you know, vigilant with what you're doing and not sending out wrong items and stuff, but also just be prepared in January for returns and other issues to crop up. It doesn't mean to say that they're definitely going to crop up. There may be circumstances in which you don't get any problems in January or you get literally one or two problems and that's it. But then there may be other years or maybe it's certain things that you're selling that lead to more returns or more issues where in January 
you'll get a load of returns, you'll get a load of issues, and you just essentially have to deal with it. The good thing is, however, you always have a good bit of capital uh, if you need to, you know, sort returns out or sort, um, you know, maybe you need to send some another item out to someone for some reason. You've always got a good bit of capital to be able to do that because of obviously having a good amount of sales in the November and December. So that's not too bad. Uh, you may end up getting a few issues in February, but it's probably not going to drag out to February so much. It'll probably be sort of the first week or two weeks in January, but you never know. It might, be, it might end up extending out and you may get um, a more, let's say, like a longer term return in uh, you know, the end of January or something like that. So uh, with that being said, that's that one really. Just make sure that you are aware that it, with increased volume in quarter four comes the uh, enhanced risk of returns or other problems. So yeah, that's a very important one to mention really. Um, storing inventory away for quarter four or not. Is it a good idea? Uh, tying up capital and space. That's what I wrote down. So I'll expand on that because basically these notes that I, that I produce are just like a they're just kind of wrote down little squiggles of words really so I'll expand upon what I mean by that so when you're actually let's say in January you've got loads of capital to invest from the previous Q4 that you've just done maybe you sell toys and games just to keep this fairly simple and to a niche that everyone kind of knows about or a lot of people know about uh, you have a lot of capital there so do you actually buy inventory then buy maybe ra stock or buy new toys and games or whatever it is uh and then store them throughout the year for quarter four is it actually a good idea so two of the points i made there two of the points i raised there was you're tying up capital and you're tying up space now I'm not going to be really negative on this point because, of course, it's something that I actually do in my business. I do store stock all the way from January all the way to September, October. I always I buy things in January, I buy things in February, March, April, etc., all throughout the year for quarter four specifically, and I always store it away and then I send it up to Amazon come about October time and then possibly also continue on uh, sending boxes up through October, November and possibly even December. So I'm not really going to be terribly negative on this point because I have a subjective viewpoint on this which is fairly positive because of my experience. Um, so essentially, you know, yes, it does tie up capital. Yes, it does tie up space. So let's get the negative stuff out of the way first with regards to this point. So if you've not got a lot of capital, if it's just been your first quarter four, uh, or maybe it's coming up to your first quarter four, you probably won't have the capital to invest in a load of stock for either this quarter four or next quarter four. So therefore, it's a, it's a huge negative and you might not want to do it. It might actually be a complete write-off for you you might think to yourself you know what i've just not got the capital to do it i'm going to buy things throughout the year and just sell them there and then throughout the year and then once i've built up a bit of a cash reserve or a little bit of a healthy cash flow then what i'm going to do is the year after i'm going to obviously go into storing some stock for quarter four and see if that works for me see if it's something i like so you are tying up capital, but also another main point is space. And I know there's probably other um, sort of points to this as well, but these are the two main ones for me. Space. So have you got the space to do it? For me, I buy, I, no, I don't buy, but I rent a lock up every month. I pay out £72 a month to rent a, is it 60 square foot or something, my lock up? I'm not, I'm not sure. So it's something like that anyway, uh, or 80 square foot or something like that. And I pay £72 a month, which is very, very reasonable, obviously, because I'm in the northwest of the UK. It's fairly cheap up here. It's not incredibly expensive. I know down south for sort of a similar lockup size, you might be paying around 200 quid a month. I mean, you might be able to get it a bit less than that as well. Depends where you are. But then there's other places it might even be more than that. So uh, it's a decent price, 72 quid a month. I don't mind paying it. 
but uh, of course I have that facility so therefore I, I don't have an issue with space for storing stock I could store I could fill pretty much all of that lock up or 75% of it with quarter four stock and that'd be okay you know I mean you've also got to you know if I was doing that which I'm not doing that I'm storing maybe about 15% of the space of a lockup with quarter four stock if I was doing it on such a scale Then you've got to work out whether the value of the goods inside the lockup and the amount of money that you'll get back in quarter four Opposed to other times of the year would be worth paying the 72 pound a month every month for nine months of the year to store it um, But if I did fill 75% of the lockup with stuff It would probably work out still financially viable for me to actually keep the lockup and pay the 72 quid to store that stuff because that would be a hell of a lot of stock and I would make a hell of a lot of money off it anyway in quarter four so it'd probably still be vi viable but at the moment I'd say maybe 15, 20% of the lockup is full with well I'd say 10 or 15% really of the lockup is full of quarter four stock so obviously I've got the rest of the lockup to utilise for other stuff which then makes it more viable anyway cost wise but I know, especially if you're six months into reselling, 12 months into reselling, 18 months into reselling, you probably won't have the facility of a lockup. You might do. You might have gone out and, and rented a lockup. It might be something that you'd done and got ticked off pretty quickly. But you probably won't have done, especially if you're three or six months into your reselling journey. So if that's the case, you've just got the space that you have in your own home. And if you've got a family, you're not going to have that much space because assuming that your kids got their own room and you you you're, you and your husband or you and your wife have got your own room and then maybe you have a spare room so maybe maybe you've got a bit of space there but that's probably um all for your listed stock or maybe you've got the garage and maybe all that's for your listed stock and you you can't have access to the spare room because it's got a bed in there and it's it's for basically when guests come so, you know, you might not have that much space, especially with your listed stuff and your packaging materials and all, all the other stuff you have. So um, then it gets a little bit harder. So then you have to think, well, maybe I won't do the whole store in for quarter four stuff. Maybe I'll have to just buy it when I see it and then list it when I see it kind of thing. And uh, maybe in the future when I've got a better, healthier cash flow, as I've mentioned, you then go and buy a, well, not buy a lockup, but you rent a lockup. Well, may, possibly you'd buy a lockup, but because that is an option as well. People do buy lockups and then it's obviously theirs. Um or rent a lockup is your other option, or rent some sort of office space, and then you can grow it from there, and then maybe uh, a year later in your journey, you may be in the position to be able to store a lot of quarter four stock and be able to tie up a certain amount of capital within that stock. I'm perfectly fine storing, Yeah, you know, I don't know how much that quarter four stock cost me in total, I mean, I've just bought it in dribs and drabs throughout the year, but it's probably only about 700 quid or something I've got tied up in there, which, to be honest, sounds like a lot, but for my business where I'm at, that's perfectly fine, I can comfortably afford to have like 700 quid or so tied up in stock, it might be a bit more, it might be a bit less, I'm not sure, could be around 500 quid, could be a, it could be around six, 700, could be a bit closer to 1000, I'm just making a guesstimate really there, I've not, I've not really looked through it all. Um, yeah, it's possibly actually a bit more than 700 now I'm thinking about, it, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. As I say, I'm just making a guess. But, you know, that's perfectly fine for my business. I can afford to do that. Someone else might not be able to afford to do that. Other people might be able to afford, you know, 5 grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever in, in stock, you know, just tying up in stock. So it just depends really. But, yeah, I just wanted to touch upon that, you know, and just bring that kind of point to light the fact whether you know you want to work out whether it's for you to to actually uh, buy stock throughout the year and kind of save it up for quarter four or whether it's not for you whether it's something you don't want to do so again that's just a personal preference thing and also money and space will come into it as well so next be prepared if you are in certain niches to have an increase in sales and therefore an increase in workload and working hours so it is something people maybe you know obviously people understand this but it's not really talked about that much when we talk about q4 people do talk about it a little bit 
but it's always talked about in an indirect manner. So people will say, well, sales increase. So then from that, you can kind of indirectly assume that your workload will increase. But it is important to actually state it out in the open that if you are getting an increase in volume of sales, then you will actually get an increase in workload. And I've remembered many times in December in, in Q4 where I have not got, I've hardly got a minute to myself. I've literally just been listing, packing, listing, packing, sending FBA shipments out, doing a bit of YouTube videos if I can do YouTube videos. In fact, there was one year when I was doing the secret life of resellers. That's what I called it. It was uh, 2016, I think it was, when I did daily vlogs on this channel for Vlogmas, it's called. I did daily vlogs on the channel. I had to edit them and upload them every day. I was doing, I was getting loads of orders and I was packing them like crazy. I was going to jumble sales. I was going to indoor car boots. I was going, you know, I was trying to source stock. I think I was doing FBA as well. Yeah, I was doing FBA. So I was trying to, at the time, so I was trying to get FBA, uh, in, you know, what do we call them, FBA shipments out and, you know, doing uh, FBA shipments and stuff. At most, well, not most days, but, you know, a couple of times a week or something. So much stuff I was doing. I don't even know how I did it. I, I just honestly, I didn't have a second to my, for myself, really. It was just, you had to, I had to throw myself into my work. And you, I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you are dedicated to reselling and if, let's say, you do want really strong sales, then you kind of just have to let go of yourself for a month of the year, for all of December let go of social, I mean, you can't have, so. I mean, you might be able to go around your friends or meet up with your friends for a little bit, you know, one day or something or a couple of days, but really that December, if you're wholly committed, you just can't do it. You just cannot see, see people really. You just got to get knuckled down and just do things really. Yeah, as I say, you know, you can see people a little bit, but not much because you're just solidly working. And especially if you're getting a lot of sales and then you're wanting to replenish those items and list. And then if you're doing YouTube as well and other stuff and, and maybe you're doing two or three different platforms that you're selling on, you will not have time if you are selling certain items. If you're selling in other niches, you may have a bit more time. If you're maybe not listing as much, you will have a bit more time because you're not obviously, um, if you're not listing as much, you won't sell as much. Therefore, uh, if that's something that you don't mind, then obviously you can have a bit more time in quarter four to yourself. But I just want to make people aware, for those of you in, who are new, if you're selling toys and games, if you're selling something that's a fast selling item in quarter four and you really want to make some money and you're really listing good items, you're listing a lot and you're doing, you're really kind of game with it. You're not going to have much time for yourself, unfortunately, um, and and you've just got to go with that. And that's not to say that you you know you can't have Christmas and stuff. And I'm going to touch upon uh, holiday mode in the next point, actually. So we'll we'll kind of trans actually we'll kind of transition to that now. So it's not to say that all this workload, you know, in December or possibly even November as well, means that you can't have Christmas or anything. There's people, what, what people do, they do one or two things. They either put their shop on holiday mode or they don't put their shop on holiday mode. And they'll still have Christmas and everything. They'll still, you know, be with their family over, the, you know, a couple of days for Christmas. And then just pack, pack do the packaging either side of Christmas. Uh, and all the, you know, like it's in a few days between Christmas and New Year, you do your packing. A few, a few days before Christmas, you'll do your packing and your last shipments out. Uh, your last, you know, your last Royal Mail and Hermes or whatever it is, you send them out. Um, so it really depends. Do you want to maybe sacrifice a few sales uh, over the Christmas period, over the, you know, bo Christmas Day, Boxing Day, maybe day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, maybe the 23rd, 22nd as well? Do you want to sacrifice a few sales over that period and put your shop on holiday mode? Um, now, it's not to say that putting your shop on holiday mode will sacrifice sales, definitely. Some people who put the shop on holiday mode actually experience the same amount of sales anyway. But it is somewhat of a sacrifice. It's a, it's a risky decision because if you put your shop on holiday mode 20 seconds or something, all the way up, you might put it on the 22nd and not take it off till the 1st or something. Uh, some people do that or some people will maybe do holiday mode for a few days uh, before Christmas and during Christmas, but then maybe take it off on the 27th, something like that. Um, 
Uh, but you've got to think, well, am I missing out on sales there? It's a, It might be a bit risky to do that. Um, alternatively, you don't put your shop in holiday mode. You have the sales as normal. You, you know, people do say, you know, people will say to me like, oh, well, you won't get Chris- sales on Christmas Day or Boxing Day anyway, you know, or Christmas Eve. You just won't do it. You know, new people will say that. But trust me, I've had sales on Christmas Day, I've had sales on Boxing Day, I've had sales on New Year's Eve, uh, not New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve. I probably had sales on New Year's Eve, to be honest. So, uh, But I've, I know I've definitely had sales Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, and, and Chris, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Um, so yeah, you will. It, you know, it's kind of a little bit naive to think that you won't, especially if you're doing Amazon FBA and eBay and you've got quite a few shipments up at Amazon FBA, you will get sales, trust me. And with Amazon FBA, it's not so bad because you're not packaging things up and the holiday mode doesn't come into it. But with, uh, you know, with eBay, you know, you might be sacrificing a few sales there. But on the on the flip side of it, we all need a break. We're, once we've had, let's say, all of November and all most of December, packing like crazy, you know, getting things sorted, listing to replenish our stock, doing FBA shipments, possibly if you're a YouTuber, a reseller YouTuber, doing YouTube videos when you can as well. Once you've had a month and a half, two months of that, you are spent. You are absolutely spent. So it may be that you just think, well, I'm going to put it on and that's that. Uh, for the last two years, I have put holiday mode on. Uh, I think I started it from around the 22nd and then I think what I did last year, I, the year before what I did was had like a 10 day period with holiday mode on. The year, last year, I think what I did was just did like a four day period with holiday mode on, like maybe the 22nd to the 26th or something like that. And then just leave, left it off. Um, and to be honest, that worked fine for me. Of course, with me doing Amazon FBA as the primary kind of source of my, my income for quarter four. Well, well, I'd say actually eBay and Amazon FBA are 50-50 really. Or they, were, they were last year anyway, and possibly even the year before that. Well, Amazon FBA maybe the year before that was a little bit more than eBay. Maybe it was 64 the year before that but last year it was pretty much bang on 50 50 in terms of sales value and profit yeah basically you've just got to think to yourself do you want that break do you want that holiday mode or essentially do you want to uh just keep going you know and then just pack up either side of christmas pack your items either side of christmas maybe even list a few items around christmas um it really depends on what you want it's it's not my um you know, it's not my decision. It's not for me to say, do this or do that, really, with the whole holiday mode thing around Christmas. It's what you want. Do you genuinely want a longer break? Then if so, you might want to put your shop on holiday mode for a good, like, seven or ten days. If you uh, want a little bit of a break, but not much of a break, put it on holiday mode for, I don't know, four days. If you don't want any break and you're blooming one of these people who are working on Christmas Day, then don't have a break, you know. It's your life. It's up to you. It doesn't matter what you do. Uh, I've, I've done a few days where I've worked on Christmas Day. I mean, obviously, I've not worked, you know, eight hours or ten hours or anything, but, where you know, in the lulls on Christmas Day. You know those kind of periods where you, you just had your Christmas dinner, and, you know, you, you maybe go into your living room or something and your family's there and everything and you're all a bit, like, kind of tired and stuff. You had your big meal, you're pretty full. And, you know, people are just doing bits and bobs of chatting for half an hour, an hour. But, you know, there's a bit of a lull. Sometimes what I do is I do a bit of sniping or sometimes... I think I have even listed a couple of items on Christmas Day before in those little lulls. And then, obviously, you have uh, your games and... Well, this is just for my family. It might be different for other people, their, their kind of traditions... But we have our games in the afternoon and the Queen's speech and all that, although I'm never really that bothered about the Queen's speech. Although I have to say, she is very elegant with, you know, the ones that, are, that I have watched, she is very elegant with the way she presents herself and stuff. And she's very um, well-mannered and all the rest of it. And just how she comes across is absolutely brilliant. Um, not that really I'm a royalist or anything, but, you know, I, I can appreciate it, you know. And I think that for such an old age, she's still got a very, very strong head on her shoulders kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, we do the Queen's speech and we do other stuff. So, obviously, I don't work all the Christmas Day, but some some years I have done little bits and bobs in the kind of lull periods just because it's something to do, isn't it? You know, I, I just don't like sitting there doing nothing, really, unless I'm doing something specific like meditation or something like that, which I, which I occasionally do. Um, because, obviously, you're doing nothing because 
that's what you want to do you, you know with meditation kind of thing uh, or you're just embracing what's going on anyway um but you know i just don't like sitting there doing nothing without a purpose or anything you know well that is kind of meditation in a way so i kind of gone back on my word there contradicted myself really there but yeah it's hard i like meditation but i only like uh, i only like meditation because i know that i'm doing i know that i'm meditating whereas if i'm doing um you know, if I'm just sat there, kind of just bored, then I like to be doing something. That's what I mean. But to be honest, that statement in itself is also a little bit wrong because sometimes, well, when you're in good meditation, you don't even know that you're meditating because your sense of self is kind of merged into the, you could say, some sort of transcendental reality or the, or the present reality of experience as a whole. So, uh, yeah, it's not even that really. Some points I know that I'm meditating. Sometimes it's just that... You know, it's an experience in itself. But anyway, I won't get onto philosophy because that's all for my philosophy channel. Again, quick plug, philosophy channel. If you want to hear me talk more about meditation and uh, all manner of different religions and all different stuff like that and philosophy and philosophical thoughts and all that sort of stuff, uh, you can hit up my philosophy channel. It is over on my featured channel list on the main page of this channel. Um, but if you don't want to go over there, you can just search Armchair Philosophy in YouTube. It should come up, although my channel isn't very big for, for that Armchair Philosophy, so it might not pop up for that, but maybe it will. So yeah, Armchair Philosophy on YouTube if you want to uh, go over there. Just a little bit of a quick plug. Um, and then what we have, I was going to say by them, but actually we've got a few comments and stuff on YouTube and Facebook. Also, as I mentioned, uh, there's just a little last point here on the end of that holiday mode point. I've put here, if selling on FBA, this is not an issue. And what I mean by that is that... Um, you know, putting your shop on holiday mode or anything isn't applicable with FBA. You don't need to package it, package anything up or anything like that. So that's a big benefit of selling on FBA over Christmas because you can be making sales on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Christmas Eve, all that sort of time, and you don't have to do anything. So you can be there eating your Christmas dinner. You check your Amazon app or something, Amazon seller app. Oh, look at that. I've got forty nine ninety nine sale or something. And you're, and you're making money there sat while you're eating your Christmas dinner with your little, uh, with one of them little red paper hats on or whatever it is. So yeah, it's, that's a huge benefit of Amazon FBA actually. But yeah, so let me go into uh, this uh, Instagram post here. And then I've also got one comment on uh, my YouTube post as well. So we've got Sail Away 1975 who's got a little picture of a, a dog. Oh, I think, I don't know whether they've... Uh, is that the same person? That might be the same person, actually, as the other week, but I don't know. It seems like they might have changed the name. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, he says, hopefully things pick up in the famous Q4, so maybe he's quite new to reselling. I'm guessing it's a he. I don't know. It might be a she. Um, there's no indication to tell me whether what gender uh, what gender they are because it, they've just got a picture of a dog, Shih Tzu, on there. Um yeah, so uh, hopefully things pick up in Famous Q4. So yeah, maybe they are new to resign. So yeah, you never know. It just depends on what you're selling. If you're selling, as I've mentioned in this video, if you're selling toys and games, probably going to pick up for you. Selling antiques and collectibles, something like that, probably not going to pick up that much for you. Uh, Sarah Resells says, Last year, I think my sales went down slightly in quarter four on eBay. As I wasn't really selling anything people would buy for Xmas presents. They went up massively on Amazon though. So there you go. That's kind of an illustration of what I was talking about. How Amazon might outperform eBay. But also there that's a, you know, a personal circumstance in which uh, Sarah hasn't been selling things on eBay that might be appealable. Uh, might, might be appealable. Might appeal to uh, the kind of Christmas market. So it might be the case that actually... This year, just actually getting involved with a few more sealed items, a few more giftable items might help bring those eBay sales up. And uh, and then obviously maybe just doing the same as you were last year for on Amazon. Depends what you want, really. Uh, but yeah, if your sales are decent on Amazon, then yeah, definitely focus on that as well again this year. Similar items, maybe, so long as you're not restricted. And yeah, so that's quite interesting. And then I tell resells, says, it is my first Q4. My preparation involves lots of listing as usual, targeting seasonal related items and researching what areas people usually spend their money in, uh, money on this time of year. 
So that's something I've not actually touched upon. So we'll just very, very briefly touch upon that, actually. Seasonal items. I've not really touched upon the whole seasonal seasonal selling thing or seasonal items in quarter four. Of course, quarter four, the main focus of it... No, the main focus of it isn't Halloween, if DBG's watching. But the main focus of it is actually um, Christmas. That's kind of a pinnacle of the end of the year, quarter four kind of thing. Um, so, of course, selling Christmas-themed items, what springs to mind is very, very good items to sell. Uh, things like vintage baubles, they're always quite good, and vintage Christmas decorations go really well and stuff. And, of course, because it's not modern Christmas decorations, because they're vintage, they have uh, more of appeal, and, obviously, you'll be able to get a better price for them. So selling things like that directly seasonal around Christmas that are relating completely to Christmas, that will help your sales as well. So you're definitely doing the right thing in targeting seasonal items. You just got to be careful not to target to uh, mass produce stuff. I mean, you can do so long as you're getting them for cheap enough. But most of the mass produce stuff, for one, there's going to be a lot of competition. But for two, it's probably not going to be very valuable. But the vintage stuff, the vintage Christmas decorations, that's a good route to go down if you can find them. But there you've got the issue of actually be trying to find them and being able to find them. But yeah, so targeting seasonal related items, that's good. Researching what areas people usually spend their money on this time of year, I suppose that will help. I mean, it's kind of extra research that that's... So, I mean, I, I've never done anything like that. I've never gone to those extents, and I've always had decent Q4s. I've always done decent sales value and decent profit as well in Q4. Um, but, you know, if you want to do that, if you so want to go to those lengths, then I'm sure it will help. I'm sure it will um, probably expand your horizons on what you can sell or what you what would be good to sell. Um, but, yeah, for me, I've, ne I've never really done that. And then, of course, lots of listing as usual. That's a, that's a key one in quarter four. Um, basically, quarter four, as I've mentioned before, can be summarized in... in in two words really or just a just a repetition of two words listing packing listing packing listing packing listing packing listing packing listing that's basically it just constant listing packing listing pack. obviously then dispatching your items as well but well that's about it it's like listing packing or you could say sourcing listing packing posting sourcing listing packing posting sourcing listing packing posting sourcing listing packing posting that is q4 you don't need to overcomplicate it that's all it is sourcing listing packing uh posting and you could even add profit onto the end of there but that's kind of unnecessary um but yeah, I mean, that's that's reselling in a nutshell. Never mind Q4, that's reselling in a nutshell. You don't need to glorify it or complicate it in any way. I know loads of people like to do sell-through rate and, you know, oh, all these analytics and click-through rate and all the rest of it, which is all well and good and everything, but you don't need to overcomplicate it in that way. It's simply listing, uh, packing, posting, yeah, so sourcing, listing, packing, posting, basically. And that's it. And that's all this is, you know. But people do like to overcomplicate it because they like to they like to put their intellect into it. They like to think, oh yeah, well I know more about it because look at all my look at all my fancy click through rates and look at all my fancy graphs that I've got going and all the rest of it. Well, that's just all ex accessories on top, really. That's not the true reality of resign. If you honestly, I could tell you quite truthfully. If you literally source a lot, list a lot, pack a lot, well, you know, uh, granted that you'll be getting the sales, grant, you know, guaranteed that you'll be getting the sales because let's say if you're listing a lot, you'll probably end up getting quite a lot of sales to be able to then pack. So if you're listing a lot, sourcing a lot, then obviously you're going to be packing a lot and then posting a lot. You're fine. That's it. That's done. You know, you, you you've got your profit. You've got what you needed to out of reselling. So that's basically the how simple it can be. It just people like to kind of say about these things because it. You know what it is really. If we're being honest with it, you know, and I'm not specifically thinking of anyone here when I'm talking about this, but essentially it's just. Uh, a sense of you know ego inflation like oh yeah well I need to do all these because I you know I, I need to feel superior than other people and I need to show that I've I've got all this knowledge on how to do these you know these sales graphs and all this sort of stuff and you know 
I can do all those things. I could go away and do all that sort of stuff. But it's like, I don't I don't need to. I don't feel like I need to. I just do what I do. I, I, I go on there. I go on eBay. I list my items. Yes, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll make mistakes in my titles. Sometimes I'll, you know, my photos might be rotated the wrong way or something like that. But, you know, people still buy the items. It still works for me. It's still cool. I don't think really people care that much if, let's say, there's a fo one photo out of your six or seven photos or 12 photos or four photos or whatever it is that's, you know, angled the wrong way because you've obviously listed it too quick. I don't think people care that much if there's maybe a spelling error in your title. Of course, the eBay search will care. Um, but, you know, so long as you do it nine times out of ten, pretty, pretty good then people don't care about those little little uh, issues that you may you may make every now and then. Uh, I'm talking about buyers really now. Um, and it's as simple as that. Just get your items on. You know, do try and do your, the best you can with your listings, uh, nine times out of ten, as I say, with, um, you know, allowance for your humanity and making mistakes every now and then. Um, and then just just get on and do it. You know, there's, there's no, there's not really any big secret to it, really. And then just do other little things if you want. So, you know, if you feel your sales are slow, then just whack promoted on. Or if you feel your sales are slow, whack a sale on if that's, you know, what you feel you need to do. But you really don't need all these accessories on top. You don't need to, like, break it down into... Because what you're doing there, really, let's say someone's really obsessive over figures really really obsessive like they're doing loads of graphs they're doing loads of spreadsheets they're doing loads of everything you're spending more time on the bloody spreadsheets you're spending more time on the bloody graphs you're spending more time on all these sell-through rates and all this all these other accessories to resign than actually on the bloody resign itself can't you just go away but go go outside go to the car boot go to the chat shop pick up a few items have a bit of fun come back home whack them on the photo area Get the best setup you can with your photo area. No, it doesn't take a genius to go on eBay, buy a couple of lights that are 25 quid for a couple of them soft bottle lights. Whack, whack them in the bloody plug. Whack them on. Take a few nice photos. If you want uh, to really do some good photos, then be my guest. Get a good quality camera, but it's not really necessary. A phone camera is perfectly fine these days. And you can actually go into your settings on the iPhone and uh, change it from... Well, actually, you know, this is in the video function, not the photo function, but you can change the video function from 1080 at 30 frames per second to 1080 at 60 frames. So I'm actually getting that wrong there. But the the camera phone, anyway, will do it in 1080, which is HD anyway. So, um, you know, it, it's fine. Just whack a few photos and then go on eBay on your computer. Nice little title. Fill out as many characters in the title as you can. Put your nice photos in there. Do a little bit of description. Go on eBay, complete and sold. Check what it's selling for. Oh, right, that's going for around $12.99. $12.99 in there. And then do your few item specifics, your postage and stuff. Not too hard. And then click list, you know, and that's it. And that's it. But God, my God. There's a bit, far too many. Well, not far too many, but there's people out there who spend far too much time on the bloody talking. Far too much time on the, oh, yes, I've got this graph and I've got the other and I've got that. Um, and, and and not enough time on actually doing some serious reselling. That's where you fall down. Now, it's not to say that you can't analyse. And a person who does this incredibly well is Ken, Ken Chapman. So he analyses his business in great detail. And he, and he does sell through rates. He does things like, I don't think he does like, I don't think he actually creates graphs himself or anything, but he does utilise things like PayPal graphs and stuff like that. But he doesn't let that kind of analysation of his business affect the actual reality of the business he's doing. He doesn't actually let that, um, you know, take away too much time from his actual reselling of listing, packing items, posting things off. So that's a good example to follow, really. Um, and it, so it's fine to actually analyse your business and look at these things, but just don't go to the nth degree. Don't go to, you know, get letting your ego get in the way, saying, oh, well, I've got this net profit percentage of da di da da oh, 65.6% .6 this month, and I, I've created this all, all these graphs on Excel, and look at this, my sales have gone up by 14% uh, in the last 30 days. You know, it's like, for God's sake, why? 
Seriously. You know, no one likes someone who's doing that. But seriously, who likes someone, like, who's going about, like, doing that? You know what I mean? You know, fair enough. Be intelligent. Do what you're going to do. But if you're going to do all them graphs and stuff, if you're going to really take it to the M degree, don't go spouting off about it like you're some spoiled kid, you know, or some kid who's got a bloody big ego or whatever. Anyway, I'm just moaning now. I'm just, I just turned into a rant now, so I'm going to get off here. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there's some useful information uh, about Q4 uh, in this podcast. I think we're around the hour. I think we've just gone over an hour, so that's quite a good uh, sort of time. So, uh, with that being said, I will leave it there, and I will see you in the next one. So, don't forget, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or queries, then please do drop them down below. I've not got a topic for uh, in a couple of weeks' time yet. I'm actually scaling these back, these podcasts, to once every two weeks. It was just getting a bit kind of on top of me doing them every week, as well as all the other stuff I do. So, I just I just couldn't do them. So, what I'm going to do is do them once every two weeks... Um, and obviously I will uh, do my posts as normal, my Instagram post and my YouTube community tab post with the topic. So when that, you know, obviously when that comes around, I will actually have a topic. I mean, you just need to comment with any questions or anything below those posts that you have if you want to get involved and you want your comments read on the podcast. Oh, I've just realised, actually... I know that some people are blooming left the podcast by now because I've just said bye, but um, there was one comment on uh my youtube community tab post so i'm just gonna get that up um one second i just realized then i was just going for oh no no i've not i've got a i've got a comment on my youtube uh post actually so it was by ian ian's been uh, a long time watcher of the channel he says why does everyone go on about q4 all the time no one ever mentions q1 q2 or q3 that's kind of what at the start of the podcast I was elaborating on about not glorifying Q4. So it's actually a really good point, Matt. It's a really good comment because people do tend to like get infatuated with Q4. Go, oh my God, it's this mystical thing that's really, especially new resellers, mystical thing that's going to make all my problems go away and I'm going to get so much money. I'm going to get rich. And it's kind of like that. Um, you know, the whole 50,000 in 30 days splash pages that I mentioned the other week, a few weeks back in the podcast, where, you know, people, uh, you go on the internet and you see these people normally sat outside with a Ferrari or whatever it is, and they're saying, I made 50,000 in 30 days on eBay or on Amazon or whatever it may be. Normally, it's on Amazon FBA these days, to be honest, because that's like the new big, well, it was the big thing a few years ago with these splash pages. Um... But yeah, it's simply not like that, and it in and yeah, you should be concentrating on quarter, the first quarter, f- second quarter, third quarter sort of stuff. You know that first part of the year because that essentially is where you need some cons- consistency. You need your business to be f- performing in those months, and then obviously qu- quarter four is like the bonus. Quarter four is like the you could almost think of it as like the the. Uh, enhanced Christmas bonus. So uh, when quarter four rolls around and, you you know, hopefully you should have been doing well all year. You should have been, you know, doing fairly okay all year, maybe with a slight dip in summer, but fairly okay. And then you think, right, well, great, we've got November, December now, and that's kind of like my my Christmas bonus. And obviously, it's way more than a Christmas bonus because sometimes when you're doing toys and games and stuff, it can you can earn quite a bit of money. But, you know, it's like, you can think of it like that, you know, so don't think of it as something that you need to, uh, that you're reliant upon for earnings. Think about it as something that's a bonus for your business, um, opposed to the rest of the year where it's been maybe just a little bit lower or it's been just fairly steady. It's not necessarily been like incredibly brilliant. But, but but think of it in terms of a bonus rather than in terms of like this glorified thing that you're you need to do really well because that's a folly that people kind of go down. Oh, I've just got a oh, it's just an auction ending thing. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there now. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there for this podcast. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, as I say, leave a like down below, subscribe, leave a comment down below, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys.